we're ready. Okay, I just clicked report on that as well. Hey guys, so today we're gonna walk you through building the boat that we think that we want, which is a Leopard 50. So we thought we would take you through, we've built it once already, but it's been a couple of months ago. Um, and we are about to get to go get on one of them. So we wanted to go through it again and make sure that we knew what questions we wanted to ask the broker. So we're gonna take you through it and show you kind of the things that we want included on the boat, um, what the options are, and then also we will know what questions that we need to ask and we'll let you guys know the answer to those too. Yeah, and should we say where we are? Is there, or we already said where we are in the last video. We're in Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> which is where the, uh, I think the only Leopard Yacht Brokerage is actually in Fort Lauderdale. And I'm gonna try my best not to scowl. We had to get the lighting correct. It's also bright AF. <laughs> it is bright in here. So, and the other thing I need to do is bring up the... So if you guys have questions, like this is the thing, we, have, we know nothing about sailboats, we know nothing about sailing, so we just decided that we wanted to buy a sailboat and live on it. And so we wanted to make some videos that take you through each, pro each process, each step of how to figure it out because we didn't really find anything on that. So in case someone else in the world decides they want to go, go from land to sea, go from land to sea with, with like, with like minute, minimal, uh, they just like, we did watch the YouTube video and caught the bug and like, yeah, okay, we're going to go figure this out. So. If you already know everything about building a sailboat or what goes on to a sailboat, just skip over this video. Or if you want to see her crazy, watch it. So yeah, Leopard 50, um, and we're actually doing a screen share and then we're doing a video. And so we're gonna try to put them together. We'll see how that works. But, <coughs> um, so there's a new Leopard 50, it's 2019. There's a new Leopard 50 that came out and that's the model that we're particularly interested in. And it actually has two different versions versions or variations. One is the Leopard 50P, which stands for performance, and the Leopard 50L, do you remember what L stands for? I think for? it's the, the lounge on Lounge, the, I think you're right. That's up on top. And so the Leopard 50 performance actually on, on top of the the roof of the boat, I'm sure it has a nautical technical term, but on top of the roof of the boat, um, doesn't have anywhere for, for people to necessarily like sit or seating or like built in seating. Whereas the Leopard 50 lounge has a whole lounge out area up there. And we are most interested in the one with the lounge area so that we can, you know, people can hang with the driver while he's up there driving. If you're if you're sailing someplace or just it seems like a great place to hang out yeah watch the beach we're so. more about um, usable lounge space um, performance is great but that's we're not into like racing or high performance sailing currently so we'd much rather want something we're gonna be living on it so we want as much space and lounge space as possible so yeah we're looking at the leopard 50l Anyway, so, and we're gonna put the link to where to build one of these if you wanna do this in the description, but it's le leopardcatamaransplural.com forward slash build your leopard. And then you'll see the different variations they have. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on here and we can start building it. So the voltage is 110 volt or 220. I would imagine that depends on whether you come from someplace in Europe, Mediterranean versus we're in the US. So all of our stuff is 110. So we were just sticking with 110. And then on the layout, they actually have a five cabins or a four cabin. From what we think that we know about researching this, the four cabins had more of a owners if you're gonna live on it layout. Yeah, the four cabins I think had an owner, you can do an owner suite and then three other cabins. Um, whereas the five cabin would probably be, if you're going to charter your boat a lot, it would probably get um, better ROI with more people being able to be on it. So we're going to do the four cabin since we're going to be actually living on it. We may charter it out a little bit. We don't know yet, but still with, we're happier with the four. All right. And you can choose your delivery location. Ah, that is true. Yeah. Like where the boat's going to be delivered. Um, so the leopard 
manufacturer is actually located in Cape Town, South Africa, so you can take it there and save money. Um, we aren't sure where we're going to actually pick ours up yet because if it is not hurricane season, then maybe Fort Lauderdale where we are right now. Um, but if we do end up buying it during like hurricane season, then we would actually prefer to probably get it in France. So in the Mediterranean. So in the Mediterranean, it looks like where they would deliver is St. Raphael, mm -hmm. France. I think I said that right. I might not have. But anyway, St. Raphael, yeah. France. So there's some other options depending on where you're located um, that you can get it delivered to. So you can just choose whatever. For it now, we it can... It will deliver to California or Annapolis. Yeah. I don't remember seeing that the first time we looked at this. Cool. All right, so basically they have the base layout or the standard included equipment list. You guys could go through that just by clicking on it and looking through it. Um, we're just going to walk you through the upgrades and extras that we were kind of thinking about um, when we think about this. And we plan on living on this. So for us, this is going to be our house. And so everything that we're thinking about is livability driven. Yeah, I it's guess. comfort driven too. Comfort. Like if you're not going to be spending that much time on the boat, it's just going to be a month here and there or whatever. You may not want to add as many upgrades. They may not be as important to you. Um, and if you're buying it as an investment to charter out for most of the time and then use it some of the time, once again, you may not want to pay for a lot of upgrades just for other people to be using. Um, they may not make sense on a, an investment. Um, so yeah, we're just going to show you what we do. Um, yeah. and you guys can decide whatever you want to. So first option is a utility room in lieu of a port forward cabin. Um, I think there's no reason for us to need a utility room. Yeah, no. So they take out part of the space and stuff like that for that. I don't. Well, yeah. it says they remove they leave the the forward head in order or the head in order to it heads a bathroom if you don't know. Um, in order to so that you can use people can use it during the day, but otherwise that room basically gets turned into a utility room. Yeah. I don't. Like, we we don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then there's upholstery packs. You can choose different kinds of upholstery. And I actually already pulled up their options of upholstery. So, they got faux, you said faux? Yeah, faux, faux leather. leather. Faux <laughs> leather, milk, artesian, and then they have some, some different kinds of material, material polyester. Um, and they got stone, dune, pebble. I was just leaning towards the milk. Yep. I like them either the milk or the artisan for the leather. I like either of those. But. The reason I I feel like that we have a our darker car mm -hmm. right now and everything shows up on it, mm -hmm. so I feel like salt's gonna show up on a darker color mm -hmm. more. But I also feel like in the sun, a uh, lighter color is just gonna feel more comfortable if sun okay. shines on it. Cool. So I don't know whether that's right or not, but that's those were my thoughts. Well, that's the color right there if you look at it. Oh yeah, that's true. I like that. The lighter color. And then they show you, they have pictures. This is a darker color. I like the lighter one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a huge difference. That's not a huge difference. So they have pictures that, I love that because it's an actual visual. So yeah, let's go with the uh, milk. Let's hit add. Oh sweet, that first option doesn't even cost anything. <laughs> we're, we're rolling now. Um, carpets and cabins and corridors. So this is interesting because I've heard a couple of people talk about this and some people like the carpets and some people don't. It's easier when you're standing around in there. It's easier to, to walk on. Um, maybe hurt your feet less. I don't know. The downside is you got to vacuum it um, or pull it out and shake it out, vacuum it because the salt, sand, everything that would occur that you can imagine in addition to being at the beach is basically going to get um, stuck in there stuck in the carpets so if you had an amazing vacuum cleaner with a dyson or something like that maybe it'd be whatever but do we want that um i don't think so i didn't think so either we can always add carpets later or buy some yeah. that we can do um later Floor link, full length mirrors. We, we can put those in later. Yeah. Four peak berth, port plus air conditioning supply. So 
says fan, a large bowl, electric toilet, holding tank, shower sump with electric pump, hand basin with combination faucet, shower mixer, and outlet socket with integrated. So this is an Space. example of, huh? This is an example of something that we're gonna to need to ask the, the yacht broker about because what I think that this is, because it's the four peak, so that's the front of the boat um, on the left side, I think they took that space up there and they are putting in a, a room up there. Maybe that might be like a, if you were... We have no idea. Yeah, we don't know. So we're gonna ask about that. <laughs> so we're that. gonna ask what that means. I was just thinking we might want to like this is gonna take a, this is gonna be like a two hour video if we take too much time. It's not gonna take that long. Okay. Interior interior salon saloon blinds front and sides. Did you, did you miss the safe? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't want to safe. If I'm gonna I'm gonna put my own safe that's gonna be good on there and then I'm gonna hide it someplace. Okay. Like maybe you can only get it from the bottom of the boat. You gotta hold your breath. <laughs> okay. Interior saloon blinds front and sides. I feel like. If you're out and the sun is just blasting, you would mm -hmm. want blinds of some sort. So then it comes down to you want to get them after the fact or you want to just get blinds that were made to be on the boat and are going to fit and it's just done. I mean, yeah. It's 6,506, but. Yeah, it's one of those things that I'm not really sure. I don't know enough about it. We might have to do a little bit more research. Um, like, on the, like, it seems like, oh, we could get blinds cheaper than that. But then the second thing is like everything costs more. Well, on the water. Yeah, we actually someone redid. Uh, we saw a video where someone redid their lounge area and their boat and their salon, and they said it was like thirty five hundred dollars just to recover. And it's not so much about um, the labor as much as it is about the material. Like to actually get material that holds up within the so elements. Yeah, yeah, within the elements, it's actually a more expensive material. So. Um, we can add it. That's fine. So then the thing that we have to think about. That's what I was thinking too. This is actually important to us. So the saloon table in the, basically in the, what would be the living, the interior living area of, of the, the boat will turn into like a bed area, a, a dining table, or it'll drop down and be a lower coffee table, or it will actually turn into, the whole thing turns into this like giant lounge where people could hang out together, watch or TV, sleep. you could sleep there. It could be extra like sleeping. If our nieces and nephews came, they would probably sleep there. That's something a, like that. Definitely something we want. We so, want that table in order to turn it into a bed. So how we have sure. extra room for sleeping. That. I think that even if you're chartering, that would be a really great addition just because it adds more sleeping area. Okay, we're on engines and drives. Yeah, so we just moved to the next one. Engines and drives. I personally think that it would... I, I don't know why, and maybe we should ask about having higher horsepower engines, but I just think, like, why not kind of deal. Um, well, you're not always going to be able to sail. Right. It, you're, you're dependent, obviously, upon the wind. And then, basically, I do these... these even though they're expensive, these propeller upgrades they're worth it. They basically fold and reduce drag while you're sailing. And then this is the weird one. I mean, we could talk about this, but for me, anything that's electric has more of a chance of freaking breaking. And like, I don't really care whether I'm looking at a little gauge because I'm sure they're gonna have a gauge that swings back and forth and has the RPMs and the throttle versus it's all on some electronic display. To me, I, I would ask about that. I don't really care, okay. That way we know what's included. Like what the advantage of it would be. Yeah. Since we don't have a lot of experience with specifically having that stuff for a boat. Navigation and electronics. Marine stereo, external speakers, forward cockpit, external speakers on flybridge. I would say yes. <laughs> you want speakers? Yeah. Okay. Which ones you want? Oh. I thought they were all in one. No. 
we would choose each one. Fusion Marine Stereo with docking station saloon. So it has Bluetooth, USB, and auxiliary connectivity. I'd say all of them. Okay. Like if we're gonna be living on it, like if it was just, if we were just randomly, I mean, you could get it just a, okay, here's the option. You can do that or you can just get a Bose movable one. That's what I had. That's what we talked about the first time we did this was we would just do that. But it's whatever. It's just whatever you think you want to do. Well, we're not for sure doing it right now, so let's just go ahead and add it. But um, that would be something. I don't know. It just right. sounds nice to have. Um, so the Raymarine base pack includes blah, blah, blah. Okay, 60. <laughs> it includes blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it includes like displays Wi-Fi, SD card reader, USB yes, outlet. I want the right there. Yeah. Yeah, I want that. Why do you want that? I want it because uh, I know enough to know that it's a nice big electronic screen that has a whole bunch of stuff in it that would just be easy to read and easy to use. Okay, so it gives you your speed, your wind speed. And it gives you additional things for you to look at while you're sailing. Sailing, yeah. Okay. So 12. So this right here is a 12 multifunction display with Wi-Fi at helm in lieu of the Axiom 9-inch multifunction display. So it's just a bigger display. It's a yeah, 12, so 12 inch, inch versus so it's three a nine. inch. Three inches bigger for an additional 2,500. I don't think I want to do that because I think I want to add an additional i70 display at the helm station downstairs no the helm station is the helm station should be where you're steering from not the navigation uh oh not okay the... yeah this is the nav station in the saloon is this okay one? so if you add an additional display the other display the new display actually shows you the depth boat speed and wind on, on different, different displays so you'd yeah. have one that could be your GPS and where you're at, and maybe um, fish finder depth sounder, which I kind of want. Well, and then the other one beside it will have will have. Gotcha. This. Okay, so you're gonna have that. Boat speed, wind. I don't know that this matters that much. Like yeah. everybody I see ha carries around iPads, and they just have an iPad that's connected to everything that they're doing in regards to this. So. I think I would rather just have an iPad that I could carry around. I could have it in the bedroom. I could have it at the uh, navigation station or anywhere. So that's my personal thinking as of right now on that. I want that. The autopilot wireless remote. Somebody was asking me that about the, the other day. Like, because I said that someone always has to be on watch when we're, um, at, like, at night when you're on, and during the day when you're on autopilot because then you might need to make some adjustments. But... I didn't realize that you could do that from anywhere in the boat. That's cool. Digital radar. I like better radar. Better radar, the better. <laughs> yeah, especially if we're going to be sailing all over the world, we definitely want to have some of the best like radar and gear possible. I kind of want a fish finder, but the problem is on the fish finder is I want a really, really good fish finder. Do you want to get a a better one than what they have. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna add it just for for right now because it might not matter. Mm -hmm. Rear view camera, forward facing camera, I think that's just gonna make life easier. When we're, when you're parking the boat, when you're yeah, pulling it in. Yeah, because it's just you and me, like I just feel like that would save us from, from killing each other. <laughs> we really like it in the car, so. Yeah, this is true. It's nice. AIS. So AIS stands for, oh crap, we knew this. Automatic Identification System. Yes. Nailed Since it. it's right High there. <laughs> it's right oh. there. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone says this is the one thing that they absolutely, if they didn't get it, they wish they would have got it. And if they got it, they're happiest purchase they got. So if literally you take a poll and everybody says get it, and they all say best decision ever, we're getting it. All right, electrical. This is the stuff that we don't really know about. Uh, shore power, we definitely want that because that's when you are, I would probably get the 12 kilowatt one. This is like when you're um, docked, like you're in port and um, you can hook up to 
Okay, I'm gonna say this as if I know what I'm talking about. This is what I think it is, is when you can hook up to the power on a dock. No, that is what it is okay. for sure, but I'm not sure why, what the difference between eight kilowatt and 12 kilowatts is. Well, I would imagine that's how much, in, how much energy you can get. You can either get eight kilowatts worth of energy or you can get 12 kilowatts worth of energy while you're there. So no, with what us, if the marina only has the ability to give you 8 kilowatts, is that going to matter? Or what if they only have the ability to give you 12 kilowatts and you have an 8 kilowatt? Is that going to, like, how would that affect that? I don't know. I imagine it's the same hookup. But anyways, so yeah, I mean that's something to ask for sure. But I would say more power just because I know that we're going to be doing business from the boat. So we're going to have Wi-Fi, we're going to have... Um, we haven't got to it yet, but I know we're gonna have a, like a water maker. We're gonna have air conditioning, um, and so we're we're gonna use a lot of energy. Um, we know that already, so that's why I was thinking twelve over eight. So this is a battery charger. So essentially, this battery charger will charge your battery if you're connected to the global power mm -hmm. or the yeah the shore power. Whatever. I think you just hit yes. <laughs> I did. That's what I was trying to do. Shaver outlets in the bathrooms. the bathrooms. So that's where you would also be able to use your hair dryer in there if you needed to. Yeah, what's the next one? Yeah, I mean, hair dryer and um, like flat, flat iron or something like that curling iron whatever I would say yes to that unless there's like a dressing area or whatever with a mirror I think we should get it I feel like people would like to have the ability to have a it's mirror it's been weird when we've been someplace and there hasn't been uh, outlets in the bathroom yeah I was just gonna say if there's a mirror somewhere else with outlets that probably might work but not for shaving you don't want to yeah. shave yeah so you shave over the sink all of these, so all of these things right here, these are examples of things we really don't understand. Oh, we don't know, yeah, what, what's the best option? Integrated USB at specified locations. Like that seems like something we would want is integrated USBs because everything runs off of USBs at this point. But I don't know, it's 6,000 watt available for outlet socks for gonna five additional batteries the one thing i do know is i want a lithium batteries in lieu of lead acid it's right there yeah yeah so it's twenty thousand dollars basically but he's done his research and knows that that's definitely worth yeah. it so i don't think we need to talk about the batteries because we would need the lithium ventilation so. fans in the cabins yes the next one said wind last up foot switch I think that that makes sense for 250 bucks. Yeah. So basically... The windlass is basically what raises and lowers the, 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 anchor. the anchor. So it's just a backup foot switch that if the remote control fails, they have that, or you have to pull it up by hand. So this Genset 9 kilowatt is basically the uh, generator, and... Runs all systems on board, such as air conditioning at night. Yeah, so, but we, we want one of those. Yeah, we definitely want a generator. I mean, there's an option of adding your own, correct? Yeah, you could add your own after the fact, but it's not massively, massively cheaper than this. Um, from what I saw, the generators are still 20000 I think, so. Having something that's under warranty and that they know and have installed might be just more beneficial than having to find your own. Provision for includes fuel supply, exhaust system. Yeah, we want all that. And we definitely want air conditioning. It's a no brainer. Just FYI too, on the provision for Genset, you definitely need to ins install that if you want to install a generator at a later stage. So this is like chilled water air conditioning. Mm -hmm. 
do, does that mean you also add this provision for air conditioning because you already got it so why would like that doesn't make any sense you wouldn't need to add this if you already got that then we wouldn't need to add the provision for the gen set either because that would already be there i don't think but yeah maybe we should ask about that the provisions like yeah. if the actual thing's included or if we have to add it yeah in addition to It's almost like maybe one of them is the actual equipment and the other is the installation requirements, but I don't know. My Google Docs went crazy. Like super crazy. So we'll have to remember that because right now yeah. that is well, not Yeah, for now let's just add it. It will over, overestimate. Mm -hmm. So electric main sheet went. I think that makes sense. Anything that makes sailing easier yeah. for us <laughs> is going to be advantageous. Yeah, especially electric for Genoa only. Uh, I think so. Okay, do you want to explain what's going on in your head? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's an electric furling system again. So the electric main sh sheet winch and the electric um, furling system for Genoa. I don't know what furling is, and I don't know what Genoa is. The sail. Okay. Furling. So wrapping around. And Genoa, if I remember correctly, and somebody can be like, put us on blast if we got this wrong, but it's the one that runs from the top of the mast out to the front of the boat. Okay. Yeah, so Genoa. So basically, it rolls it up. Mm -hmm. Electric, electronically. Okay. Yep. You guys can see how ignorant we are on this, but I'm pretty sure that's right. I mean, everybody, no matter where, when they started sailing, had to learn these things. So. This is true. This is true. And if you waited until you knew every single little freaking thing, you would probably never do it. I mean, that's what a lot of people say. They just get stuck on land because they want to do it, but they have all of these other things. So We're very much of, if we want to do something, it doesn't matter if we don't know anything about it. We'll, we'll learn. We'll learn as we go. Absolutely. The worst that can happen on that is we spend money and we're like, ah, oh, damn, I wish we hadn't spent money on it. It's not like it'll kill us. Yeah, motorized TV lift, we don't need that. Provision for TV, we don't need that. No. None of that. No, we don't need any TVs. Solar panels, we want solar panels. We do, probably six, if that's the best we can get. Yeah, we are not actually planning on living um, in marinas. Like everybody keeps asking that. We don't plan on doing that, we plan on Living in the ocean. Living in the ocean, <laughs> out, exploring, adventuring. So the shore power is probably not as critical as like... Solar panels. Yeah, exactly. Sterling alternator to battery charger. Mm -hmm. What is that? An alternator to the battery charger mm -hmm. is basically going to uh, charge if, if I, I think I understand this right, it includes a buttons to link engine batteries to house batteries. So if you needed to charge your engine batteries mm -hmm. um, off of your house batteries, you could do that. So you could essentially char charge, okay. or, or you probably could charge all of your batteries on your boat um, while the engine's going. I think it's gonna have something to do with that. Okay, we don't need a microwave oven, but we definitely need underwater lights. We definitely need underwater lights. <laughs> I want to be able to see the fish at night under there. Right, and the reason why and not every you don't need that. It's just a as an extra um, worth every freaking penny. But yeah, for us, it's definitely it was it was a want slash must have. <laughs> uh, and then we don't need a microwave and oven in the gallery because I've been looking at these like little uh, ovens. Yeah, it's so a, it's like a toaster oven, a microwave, and an air fryer all in one. And it's a galley, not a gallery. Just FYI. Yeah, whatever she said. <laughs> okay, you might some, be right. This is going to be a long freaking video. We'll yeah. try to speed it up. Well, we might have to cut some out. Plumbing. So plumbing. Electric fresh water flushing toilets. Um in lieu of the salt water flushing toilets Why to be does... honest with you i don't know what the difference is it doesn't cost anything but we might ask if salt water causes any issues within the lines i mean i've seen the systems enough because i've looked at the systems like 
Salt water okay. corrodes metal, so that's the biggest issue. Okay, so copy it and paste it. You might just have to put it in notes for right now because that's not working. Okay, water maker. What's the difference? Plus water treatment system because then you, it makes it drinkable, makes it potable. It's only, it's only a couple of thousand more, yeah. Well, I think it will take out some of this stuff too. It'll be better for your hair and skin and like all that stuff. Okay. Seawater inlet seacock with hose lead above it for future water maker installation. I don't think we need we that. We already got that. Yeah. A dishwasher and gallery. We don't need a dishwasher. You don't need a dishwasher? No. Who's gonna wash the dishes? I can wash dishes. Mm. You want a dishwasher? You can add a dishwasher. I don't know, that is just one more freaking thing that can break and take up room. I'm okay without it. I guess I grew up without a dishwasher. We'll add it and we can take it out later. Nah, it's okay. Okay. Deck wash, fitting, and pump, dual fresh salt water system. Yes, because we might want to take showers out there. We might want to do all kinds of that stuff. That means it's up in the, yeah, in the back of the boat. Like where you get yeah. in and out of the water, and then yes, we want the hot water to it. For so this is for the desk deck. This oh, is stern shower deck. hot water. So gotcha. this is a stern shower with hot and cold water in lieu of cold water only. Yes. Hail to the yes. <laughs> That's the other thing that people have all said is amazing. Is having that hot water yeah. out in the back when you get off to rinse off, and especially if it's cold, having that hot water because a lot of people actually say they even just take showers out there. Heating, refrigeration, and gas. Cac cockpit 12V refrigerator. So this will basically put a refrigerator in your cockpit. So this comes down to like how much refrigeration do you need, which also comes down to like how long are you gonna spend time off grid, if you will, or away mm -hmm. from, from being able, or like lo long ocean passages, right? Well, yeah, and I would think, A, I would think the more refrigeration space that we can get, the better. Um, personally that's what all right wine cooler electric grill we don't want that do we no built into maybe huh? i don't know yet i don't think so okay wine cooler and galley so it looks like we have to have either wine cooler or an ice maker you can't have both so some people we've seen bought an ice maker that they like keep on their counter. I would prefer to have a wine cooler. You prefer to have a wine cooler over an ice maker? Well, if we can get the ice maker to sit up there, then yes. I guess you can get a wine cooler that sits on top as well. Yeah. But I would imagine we'd have more wine. I think when you're out and it's hot, like imagine when we've been here in Florida, it's like, give me ice water. Like ice is going to be a huge deal. Okay. So 12 volt ice maker in galley. Well, there's one in the galley and one, or it's in the, in the cockpit, aft cockpit. So they're the same price. Which one, where do you want the ice maker? I think in the galley. Mm -hmm. Refrigerator in galley is you can't order it with a dishwasher. Right. So, so, and a freezer, so yeah, we, we want, want both, both of those. those. So a refrigerator and a freezer. As much cold space as we can get. Sweet. Deck and hull. I think, I think this and the sails were where we really didn't know what, <laughs> what right. we needed. Um, Flybridge incorporating, this is like the Flybridge lounge. Yeah. So incorporating seating, sunbed, table, and shade awning. That was an absolute yes for us. Exterior pack. Do we, do we want gray or navy? Gray. Okay. Uh, the enclosure is another thing, and people are like, they thought they wouldn't use it, then they got it anyway, and That's it was like a heck yeah. So For sure an enclosure. Basically, enclosure, it goes around the cockpit to help it from if there's any spray or any rain or anything to keep you dry. Um, but Stephanie, yes. What did you just click on? Removable helm seat spray dodger. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Shoe locker. I don't think we need that. Aft cockpit cushions. Yes, we want cushions for the seats. 
Like once again, you could do all the cushions and stuff afterwards and maybe get a little bit cheaper price, but to, for us, time is money as well. And so us having to find someone and take the time to actually spend to find someone who knows what they're doing is gonna give us good material and do a good job for a cheaper price. Um, that just seems like a lot of time. So for us, it's just better to go ahead and pay for it and have it already done. So we're probably gonna just buy all the cushions and everything with the boat. Yeah, honestly, for us, this is like not drastically different than you move into a new bigger house and in your new bigger house, you have to go buy all new furniture or a bunch of new furniture. That's kind of what this is. That's what the, yeah. yeah is but not. you could go and try to find the cheapest furniture possible or a really good deal, but you're basically taking your time in order to save money versus us, we actually make more money with our time so um we prefer to do it this way but there's no right or wrong you guys can do it i don't think ever. we need this stainless steel cockpit the tables tools i don't think we need that stainless steel dive bottle rack on swim platform holds four bottles i think that's something we could add later yeah i agree leather covered steering wheel i don't think we need that Stainless steel davit system. Yes. No, we're getting something else. Oh, it says a fabulous way to raise and lower your dinghy with just one finger on a switch. This is what we're getting. Oh, a winch type lifting platform with folding chocks. Okay, you want that instead. Oh. There's folding ones and there's fixed ones. I don't know what the difference is between the same that. price, but so the winch type lifting platform is actually like a swim platform on the back, also where your dinghy goes and it raises and lowers. But it is what an extra oh folding chocks chocks are the things that hold your hold your dinghy. I bet the folding ones fold down to make it more of a swim deck. And yeah. this is actually one of the biggest features that I'm most excited about on this boat. Um, is the platform we we had a friend that had a boat on a on a lake like a power boat on a lake but they had a swim platform that raised and lowered and that was kind of i mean people would really hang out back there because sometimes if it were really really hot out they would put it a little bit under the water and so everybody could sit kind of in the water to stay cool but sit on there the kids would swim it. off of it be a great great little splash deck for if you have little kids right um so definitely we're doing that it's Fifty five, fifty six thousand extra dollars, yeah. but definitely something that we know that we're going to value and use. I don't give a shit about teak. I may, but we don't have to add it right now. All right, sales. Right now, we're not gonna do that. Yeah. So sales and rigging. This was the thing that we, since obviously we don't know a ton about sailing, we were not sure exactly what. Um, we wanted and what was just not like, necessary. I know a little bit. Like I know that uh, asymmetric spinnakers for running downwind. Mm -hmm. um, you know more than I do for sure. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is like we might want to get our own spinnaker and just pay for it and then like have something cool put on it so it's unique to us and unique to the boat. Like put our logo on it. Mm -hmm. That could be cool. Um, but then again the flip side is just being able to do it. Code zero. That definitely was something we want. Yeah, um, so I know we want a code zero. Um, it's great for sailing downwind. People use the hell out of them. If they don't buy them, they always come back and buy them later, I've seen. We want upgraded sails. Would you just add? I added a roller furler to the bow sprit. Gotcha. Bow sprit. Um, the reason why I did that is I'm pretty sure that there it runs from the main mast down, and then you can run another one down, and so you can have a, a sail out to the left and a sail out to the right, both going from the that front of the boat, and you can sail downwind extremely quickly, which would be great if you were going 
across the oceans essentially with the trade winds that's could be mostly downwind sailings and that would you could get there so you quicker, want a code faster. zero and a code d no i think i just want a code zero and okay. then i think you would want the asymmetric on the other one but you're already going to have so we want upgraded high performance sales we just need to talk to the guy about sales um i'm not worried about that okay and I'm not worried about the square top mainsail. Super T lines. I don't know what super T lines are. Yeah. So we just need to ask about all of that. Yeah, we should just ask about a lot of this stuff. Uh, all of the sales stuff. Yeah. And most likely when we're ready to actually order it, I bet that we could call and go through it with them. I know that I want uh, a Mantis anchor. Um, so I'm not worried about adding any of the anchors adding the anchors you do want the anchor chain though right yeah I do want the anchor 330? chain 330 yeah 330 feet why is that why that long um just in case we want to anchor in deeper water yeah for some reason um more than anything for most people you probably wouldn't need that but if you're going to sail all over the world and be anchoring versus going into docks and things like that then that's why he wanted a longer anchor chain he, he explained it to me last time we did this i can't remember everybody has an anchor bridle so we might as well get it um, i think that they use that when they're doing mooring balls and stuff okay. no it's an anchor bridle so basically it goes from your two outside hulls to your chain and I think what it does is it, it essentially reduce the shock of your of your anchor. Ah, oh, pulling from one side to the other. No. No? Because your your anchor <laughs> is your I don't anchor. Know. Oh well I'm making it up, but I'm not making it up. I'm just thinking about physics. Your anchor is a is on is attached to your boat by a very, very stationary point. So if you can imagine something slamming into the end on the end of a rope, mm -hmm. the the anchor bridle should basically dampen the shock of when you're when the wind blows and, and hits the end because it, it springs or or it spreads out. it doesn't allow the chain to go and hit and hit the end i'm pretty sure that's why people get it we'll get one fenders moorings and just spring google lines. it we'll google it and we'll google it maybe <laughs> we should do a video on that anyway we'll google it google it Fenders, moorings, and spring lines, might as well just freaking get it, get it done. And yep. fenders are not cheap. Like, I've looked at them before, so if I'd rather just have it and not have to think about it. Aren't those the little white things that protect your boat? The fenders? Yeah. Or are fenders built in? Nope. That's the little, like, rubbery things. Yeah, that... they're the little rubbery things. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I just clicked on commissioning. Um... So essentially transport documentation commissioning, they already put that in. Supply of Australian compliant equipment. We don't. Uh, don't need that. Mm -hmm. CE safety package, including life raft required for in water deliveries. Yes. So delivery to Fort Lauderdale. It's $51,000. So this is if, if you water, if you freight deliver it, deliver it, then it's 51.2. If you water delivery, which means that... They sail it? They sail it there. It's 34. It's 34. I don't know which one's better. I mean, obviously... I wouldn't talk to him about that, but in many respects, if we had a somebody that sailed it here... Who was? I mean, they're not gonna. Have, I mean, they're gonna have somebody that's a professional and does this all the time. That would double as the shakedown cruise in many respects. Like, if something well, could go wrong, it will go wrong. I'm curious if they're gonna water delivery it. What does that mean? And does that mean they're actually sailing it? And can we be on it? So we'll ask about that. Yeah, because that would be great. Because if they're having somebody professional sail it, we could learn a lot on that shakedown cruise. So you copy and paste that so we know to ask him. Yeah. U.S. Coast Guard safety package, including life raft. So. That's a yes. And then just choose, just choose the more expensive delivery. That way we know what pricing is. Okay. 
we'll talk to our guy about it. So clearly we added on a few things versus what we had added last time because today we're at 1.2. Yeah, I think before we were at 1.15, so it may have been just some extra stuff. So 1.2 million for the yeah. boat, brand new. Which is not bad. Mm -mm. Um, which we definitely be paying that if we were buying a house in Vegas. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And that's really the, like the fact of the matter. I don't like if we're in Vegas, to even get close to what we wanted, we'd be paying 1.2 and truthfully, most other places, unless we wanted to move back to the middle of Oklahoma or the middle of Texas, which we have zero desire to do, like all of the places mm -hmm. we would want to live, especially on the water, we would be mm -hmm. paying for that much. And with it just being her and I. We're always looking at not so much house space and much more like yards. Outdoor, outdoor, outdoor space, space, yeah. And it doesn't get larger outdoor space than have the entire ocean at your beck yeah. and call, so. Awesome. Yep. If you guys have any questions, post them below. If you have any advice, definitely post that. Um, and yeah, that's us building um, the boat that we think that we want and we will also be having some videos if we're able to record today when we get to go see the leopard 50 we will definitely do that um, and share that with you guys and share our um, like what we think after we actually get on it and see it in person so for sure thanks for watching make sure to like the video and subscribe so you get notified when we post new videos thanks guys bye